Nikon Education Foundation presents 7 weeks free data analytic training. In these 7 weeks, you're going to learn Excel, MySQL, and Power BI. Also, you'll be getting a certificate of completion by the end of this course. Join us on this journey of becoming a certified data analyst. Good afternoon, everybody. I welcome you all to today's training, week 5. And I hope you have your laptop on already and your notes pad beside you. So, we are going to start from where we stopped yesterday. But before I share my screen, I want to apologize for what happened yesterday. Actually, my laptop misbehaved, so I couldn't help it yesterday. I couldn't come online again. Um, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. So let's go into the training proper. Thank you. Um, yesterday, I said we are going to look at relationship. That is how relationship works in Power BI. Now, we continue from here today. Now, if you look at this particular table, you will see something like bonus ID, customer ID, name, phone number, city, country, and salesperson. Now, if you look at this second table, you will see customer ID, other ID, products, units sold, and expenses. And lastly, if you look at this table, you will see bonus ID and then bonus. Now, let's say I want to import this data into Power BI and then I want to establish a relationship between the three data shown. Now, when we are talking about relationship, what we are saying is that a related table. Now, if you look at this table, this customer table, if you look at this particular header, which is bonus ID, and if you look at this particular header, which is customer ID, and then if you come down to this table and you look at this header, customer ID, and then other ID, it means that this table two of this other table that has customer ID and this table that has customer ID, they are related. It means that the information, it means that the, it is, it means the continuity of this particular table. In other words, the information of these guys can also be seen inside that second table. So customer ID here on the customer table and the other table, the second table, we have customer ID, customer ID. So the colon are related, which means when I import the two table to the Power BI, when I import the two table to Power BI, I'm expecting Power BI to establish, to establish a relationship on this table using customer ID. In SQL, we call it primary key. But I won't use SQL terminology here because we are doing Power BI here. So we are just going to say a, an elder in a column. Now, another thing is this. If you look at this table, if you look at 
this table, we have bonus high day. This, uh, this, and, this and another in a table. Now, if you look at this table as well, the customer table, it has bonus ID. I mean, the header, column A, the header. So let's move into Power BI and see how we can establish the relationship. Now, I've already opened my desktop, so I wouldn't need to open it again. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to import my data one after the other. Then I will, I will follow this route this time. I will click. And then I have my data on the desktop. So let me go to my desktop and get my data. Yeah, this is the first data, customer table one. Then I will load. So it's still loading. Now this is my post data. Now it's asking me, let me take this one. Now, is asking me load transform data cancel now i'm not transforming this data is a clean data so i will just load Now, the second thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to go for another data. That is the second table. Let's still down a few seconds. Good. Now, this is my customer table. Now, I will go back to get data again to pick the second table on that desktop remember i said you will be the one to know where you save your data and then i will pick other table open so i will also wait for you to load other table I'm not transforming this data, so I will just load. Now, see what is going to happen here. Dictating relationship. So, dictating relationship, it has already established the relationship for me. Now, I've brought in two tables. I have two tables now. So it remains one, which is bonus table. Then I will go there again and get my bonus table on that desktop. I have it on that desktop. And I will just come down here and get my bonus table. And I will open. OK. So I will just, just for the preview, I'm not cleaning this data. I will just load. See, dictating relationship. I have 17 rows all together. Now, I have my first table, customer table. I also have my other table. And I have bonus table. Now, 
if you look at these three tables, they are related. They are related because this customer table is just the, the other table is just the continuation of the customer table inside another table, followed by the bonus table. So it means that there is a relationship between these three tables. Now, it means when you want to establish a relationship, the first thing you must understand is the table I want to build relationship on, are they related in any form? So that is the question you ask yourself. And then you, you're asking yourself, you're already checking the data. And then when you notice that there is no correlation between the two tables, it means cannot you cannot that. establish a relationship. Now, let's see the header, bonus and bonus ID. I also have under my customer, I have, these are my columns. And then under other, I also have this. Now, let's see the relationship, how it was established in Power BI. I will come down here. I will eat this. Now, if you look at my first table, I brought in customer table, which would be my table one. And then I brought in other table, which would be my table two. Continuity of my first table here. So there's a relationship. Now, if you look at my customer ID here, and then if you look at the second table here, you will also see customer ID. When I click these two arrows, I could see that a relationship has been established between customer table and other table. So it brought in, he used this column and the column here. Fine. Now, if you look at the third table, let me see I can let me see. Let me try to drag. Now, if you look at this particular table, this bonus table, you will see that the joining, as in Power BI joined the bonus ID, this bonus ID with join this bonus ID with this bonus ID. So you will see that a relationship has been established. A relationship has been established on my table. And also, it means that if I want to carry out my visualization, what I will just do is that I will just come down here, report view, then I will do my visualization. Sorry, I'm... Okay, so you've been able to see now that the table here and the table here, they are related. And the table here and the table here are also 
related. Okay, so now I will go back to my report view. Now, under my report view, now you will see that if I try to work on this data, that is, if I bring any of this column and drag them here, they will definitely respond because I've already initiated, because the relationship has already been initiated. Now, for instance, let me say I want to bring in the country. And then let me say country by Unisud. What did I go and pick? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I went to pick. Remove. Sorry. Now let's I want to go for. Yes. Oh. Let me say. Name. By. expenses now you look at this table you will see that i brought the name is under customer table and product is under and expenses is under order table don't forget i say the continuity of customer table now let me just try to Put a chat here now. What I have just done is that I have just I have just carried out a visualization, and then I've been able to, after joining, after building a relationship, after establishing a relationship, I've been able to visualize this table and then this table. Now you will see that name is not inside this table rather this table so because i have already established a relationship via my model then i can i can check in anything from any table then i will also see the results why because a relationship has been established so it means that i can then continue to carry out my analysis that is i can begin to build my reports i can begin to build my reports so as a data analyst what i would just say is that whenever you are working or whenever you want to work on a project and you the, the project the data is more than one data maybe you are being told to carry out the analysis in Power BI, and then you are being told to carry out the analysis using Power BI. That's number one. Now, upon seeing the data, you realize that there is no correlation. It's like this is sales data. And you ask me to add in, you add me to add COVID data to this data and visualize them on one report. I mean one report like this. Now, the question is, I'm going to ask the person, COVID, COVID data, that is the record, the data, and sales data, there is no correlation. How will I visualize a, how will you tell me to establish a relationship on sales data and COVID data, there is no correlation. Except there is a column that has, except there is a there is a there is a there is a column that that 
as we accept there is a column, except in 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 COVID column and your sales column, except they are related. Maybe one column are related to the sales data. But even aside that, self, how would you visualize a sales data with the COVID data? That's that's that, that that's wrong. You can't even do it. You will rather set them aside, COVID data on its own, and then your sales data. So what am I trying to say is this. A data that you always build relationship on, that we always establish relationship on, the data must be related. And if you look at my data, you will see that they are related. This customer, continuity of my table, order table. This same customer, we have order, their expenses, and then bonus as well. So they are related. So you cannot build a, you cannot build a relation, you cannot force a relationship. You, you can you will not even see the you will not even see the activeness. You cannot force a relationship, except they are related one way or the other. So by venture in the future, you want you want to carry out analysis on two, three, four, five, six tables. Check their columns. If by venture they are saying, visualize them, build a report on them, one report with the five tables, then maybe they want you to establish a relationship. Then check the column. Are they the same? Are the data the same? Before you begin to carry out the analysis. That shows you are skillful. At least you are checking the data. Are they the same? But if they are not the same, but what they are saying is that after building the first report, save it, build the second report, save it, build the third report, save it, build the fourth report, save it, and build the fifth report. Hey, you are not talking now. So that is how we, that is how to establish relationship in Power BI. So another thing I would like to say before we move to the next thing we have today is this. Another thing I will have to say is this. In Microsoft Excel, is it possible to establish relationship? Yes. Is it possible? Yes, 100% possible. Then how? Good. Now, if you look at the visualization we did last week, it was just one table one table one table now let's say you were given a tax and you were given two table two tables and then you realize that you check the table you notice that they are related fine and then you look at the column you look at everything they are related that means you are expected to build a dashboard on the two tables. Now, and the one you know is first the, the one with the, we did one table, how to visualize just a single data. Now, this time you are given two tables to visualize, and you have looked at the pivot table field everything you notice that you can only do one table at a time you, in, in, you can't do two tables now do you agree about that now when you see that kind of thing then how do you agree about it two things now the first thing is in microsoft excel we can also establish a relation a relationship but we can this can only be done using power pivot power pivot now if you check your interface your exam interface you will not see power pivot there and it's not inside this curriculum but you will you will need to call it out that is you will use your get adding to activate your 
power pivot. Now, it is via power pivot that we can do this thing that I just did in Power BI, via Power Pivot. So Power Pivot is another lesson, is another teaching on its own, Power Pivot. So it means that in Power Pivot, once I bring in my three tables, the next thing I'm going to do is to establish my relationship via the column header inside power pivot so power pivot will enable me to visualize if you do this three data now you cannot visualize it in microsoft excel in the, the route i taught you this because there are three tables we can only do it via power pivot from power bi you can do it so that means through power pivot then i will establish my relationship via power pivot and then I will now begin to build my report. So another dynamic thing about Power Pivot is that you will always see KPI there, Key Performance Indicator. So let me leave that. Now, let's not say that you don't have the knowledge of Power Pivot, but you have the knowledge of Power Query. Now, you can ask the person, Sir, can you allow me to take use of Power Query to carry out this visualization? Maybe the person, maybe the person allows you to do to to use Power Query. Now, it will mean that means that you are you are already knowledgeable about Power Query. So that means in Power Query, these three tables i can turn them to one table i can turn them to one table a single table a single table i can do that in power query that is after i will join them together in power query i will use match to match these three tables together and after matching them together it will become one single table i can then carry out it will become a single table although it will now be long imagine all the headers it will be long then i can delete my customer id bonus id i can delete those ones and then i will begin to carry out my analysis but let's now say the person says even if you match them together using power query i still want you to use power pivot for the visualization because i want kpi Key performance indicator. I want to see it. So it means that from Power Query, then I will load it into my data model. And then from my data model, then I will, I will enter into my Power Pivot to get the data and do the visualization. Even though I've already done the, I already created the relationship using Power Query. I've already created the relationship. I've turned into one table then I can still use my Power Pivot to still visualize that single table. So in Power Pivot, you can visualize a single table. You can also visualize more than one table in Power Pivot. So that means your knowledge of Power Query is very important and your knowledge of Power Pivot is also important if you will be visualizing more than one table. So you know i i won't say i i won't want to tell you that you don't need to know two tables you don't need to just know just single table that is the one i taught you and then you are okay fine you can yes you can you can do more of one single table visualization yes you can if i you can do more of it you can do it but maybe it gets a time that you were told you were just giving two three tables to, to establish relationship and to visualize how we agree about them so that means the knowledge is also very good but if you are told to do it in power bi not in excel then you can follow these routes come to your data model and see the relationship 
and then see how Power BI establish the relationship and then continue your visualization. All right. Thank you very much. So, um, done with my explanation on relationship. So, the next thing we are looking at today is want to visualize a data. And this data is the assignment I gave to you last week. I said, the one I said you should not submit. We are going to work on the data together this afternoon. Then I'm going to initiate some stuff on the data. I'm going to initiate some stuff on the data using the using DAX, data analytic expression, DAX, to get some function, to get some formula, to calculate some formula on the data, and then do our visualization we are going to look, look at logical statements in power bi how we can write a logical statement in power bi how we can use DAX to initiate dates in power bi and then how we can mm, what is the what you want to look at today then how we can get a total activities in a particular region using a formula in Power BI. So that's what we are going to look at today. So I'm going to go into it now and then, yes, let me go into it. So I'm done with this. I've already opened my desktop. I just want to be careful today. I don't want what happened yesterday to happen today again. So I've already opened it already so that there won't be any wala. So let's start now. Now, I want to get the data from my quick access so i'm going to use this route again to get my data now this is my quick access this is my quick access and oh we have the data here finance set data this is data here we eat it then i will open sorry please i need your response admin please i want people to i want you to unmute yourself unmute yourself i want to ask a question now the assignment i gave to you guys last week on Mm, on this particular data you know i sent to assignment one pivot table and the other one mm, the one i said you should practice with and i said you should not submit that one so i just want a response and if you don't do it just just don't talk if you know you don't do it don't respond so please i want to ask did you do did you practice that data if you practice it what i'm about to do now will make sense at least you now be having the oh in power bi this is how we can navigate you okay i use people table in excel now in power bi this is how to go about it so let me ask did you do the assignment the one i told you to practice on this data i need the response no sir i just add one person no sir, no sir. Please, we are all to respond. Did we practice the second assignment that was given, the 4B assignment that yeah, was okay. meant for practice? I practiced practice. this, but I don't understand it. So I don't okay. it. Good, thank you. I love, I love this. I love your heart of sincerity. Thank you. Another person. I practiced it at some point. I got stuck, so I did not continue again. Okay, I love the sincerity. Anyone again? Okay, uh, I do. I'm actually starting, but I'm not done with it. So. Okay, you are still doing it. Okay, another person. Yeah. I just okay, want to uh, continue. Okay, I've not, I've not practiced it, but so I plan to practice it this um, this week because I'm trying to understand the first one. I'm trying to go over it again and the fourth. Okay. Four 
Thank you, sir. I need one person again before I go. One person. Okay. Um, I attempted this, sir, but I got stopped along the way. Okay. All right. Thank you. I love this sincerity. And those that are not doing it, well done. I greet you. Well done. So you can just meet yourself back. Let's look at the material now. Now, this is the data. I'm going to look at the preview. And then, now I want to work on this data. I want to do little transformation on this data. I will come to my, I will load this time. I will just say transform data. So, Okay, good. Now, yesterday, I told you that this 100% means color quality. It means that this data is accurate. There is no error, no error, no error, no error here, yeah. accurate. But as for me, I want to do a few things on this data. So, those that got stuck along the way, those that just want to practice it, and those that did not even do it, just be attentive and let's enjoy the ride. Now, if you look at my date, you will see 11 2014. 11 2014. You will see 2014 is much on this data. You will only see little of 2013. Notes. What I want you to understand is. When carrying out visualization, you cannot force Power BI to do what is not inside the data. It means that more of the thing we are going, more of the mm, more of the information we are going to see will be based on 2014. We are going to see more of them to 2013. So it means that at times when you try to click a date, you might not you might see it blank. Why? Because on the data. There is no record, no date there, so it will be blank. And at, at times, if you click another date, it will pop out because there is a record there. So you can't force, we can't force Power BI to do what is not inside the data. It means that if I will use my date function, I will only get the transaction that was done during this particular period, day, week, month, year. Now, in also, I have 1-1-2014. One, one, it means I have months, I have day, and I have year. So, so therefore, I don't need month number. I don't need month name, and I don't need year. Why? I already have them here. So, I don't want them. What do I do? I'm going to delete this column. Delete, and then delete. Now I'm going to come to my home. I will come to my remove column and then remove columns. So that's first thing I'm um that's the first thing I'm, I've just done on this data. Now if you look at this data again, I have segments, I have country. I have segment, I have country, I have product, I have discount band, I have units sold, I have manufacturing price, I have sales price, I have my sales price, I have my gross sales, and if you look at this, I have sales here, and I also have sales price here. Now, oh, sorry. Yes, sales price, sales. So just ignore sales. Let's come to gross sales. Now, if you look at my gross sales, I have 32,370. If you look at it, if you look at it, if you pay attention to this column and this column, you see that they are the same. The question is why? I don't know. Because it's a public data. I also 
I think someone sent it to me or I downloaded it. Any of the two. But if you look at these sales and look at these cross sales, they are the same. So I don't, I don't need, I want to delete one of them because they are the same. And I'm, I won't carry a visualization on them. So I will delete, but I won't delete gross sales. Rather, I will delete my sales. I will click my right click and then remove. Now, I have my cogs. This one, cost of goods. I also have my gross sales. I can give it a dollar sign. I can also give this one also a dollar sign. Fine. My sales price, I can also give it a dollar sign. Can you see? I'm transforming this particular data. And then my profit, I can give it a dollar sign as well. Also, I think Unisold is, you can give this one a dollar sign. This can band this one as well. I think this one is a test. I think it's a test. Then we have products, we have country, and we have segments. Now I'm done with my transformation. Then I want to do some stuff on this data. Now, let me say this. The stuff I want to do on this data, I can do bulk of it or bulk of them inside this Power Query Editor. Yes, I can. Inside this Power Query Editor, I can. But I won't because I want you to have the knowledge of DAX in Power BI. So we will not make use of Power Query. Rather, we will make use of the one in Power BI. So I won't use Power Query to bring out. You know, I said I want to. I want to show you some stuff. I, I want to use Power Query to bring out the stuff. I'm going to use Power BI. So now that I'm done with my transformation of this data, the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to. I'm coming. Okay, I want to show you something, but it's not. I wanted to. I'm. I want. I'm thinking of showing you the code behind what I have just done in Power Query, but I think there is no need. Let me come to my home again, and then I will just close and apply. So I'm loading my data now. Still loading. I want it to load before we continue. Of course, we cannot even continue until it's finished loading. So. Oh, I, I, I. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Good. Now, I'm waiting for this thing to load. Okay. Thank you. Now, this is the data. I have calls, I have country dates this combined in short all the column headers now if you look at here if you click this particular three button you will see a date query that means if i want to go back to let's say i want to delete a column or i want to quickly write a mathem mathematical expression using power query i will just come to my edit query and then I will click and look at here again. We also have rename. That means I can rename my table. I can rename my table. Also, I can delete this stuff from my model. I can delete this table from my model. But we are not doing, we are not deleting anything here. So now, the first thing we want to do is that we want to use DAX, DAX, to get the average profit. The average profit here. I think I need to be fast now because 
visualization used to take time. So let me begin to rush now. Now, I want to look at average profit here. I'll click, then I'll come to my new measure, not new column, new measure, new measure. I click. Now, I'm waiting for something to pop out. Good. Now, we'll come down here. I will, I will clear this thing. Then I will write the title. Average. Of it. Equals to. Then I will type. Average. Now. Average profit. You look at here. This financial means my table, table, the table, the old table. Now the, the name of the table that is this thing. This is it here. This this stuff. This thing. This is it here. Table. And then profit. A there is this a, a particular column called profit. Profit is here already, right? This profit here. This is where we are building our new measure home so i'm going to select financial financials profit i'll select and i'll close my brackets this dax i'm right i'm using dx in power bi mathematical expression and i will hit my enter now this is my average profit now i've already done my average profit so all the old profits here, the average, I've done it here. If I want to see it, I can just use my, let me just click average profits. And then let me use my white card, my card here to bring it out. This is, this is my average profit. What I just did now, this is the average profit. Just, I just wanted to see it. Let me delete the visual. Now, the second thing I want to do is I want to bring out, I want to use another expression that is the average unit sold. And this is our unit sold. I will come down here and I will click this three button. I will new measure again. I'll come to my new measure. I'm going to do the same thing here. So I will clear here, then I will put my average. Average units so so cut to average. I'll click my average. Now I'll find my unit suit. Yeah, it's not here. I'll keep clicking until I see it. This is it here. My table and the column. I will click. I will. Oh, sorry, I will close my close my brackets, then hit my enter. So now I I got my average unit suit already. Now I won't need to show you because of time. Now let's move to logical statements. Now I want to write a logical statement on the profits. The profits. So that means if I'll be writing a logical statement on the profit, this time is going to be a new column. I want to get a new column, a new column. How do I go about this? I will come to my profit. This is my profit here. Then I will, the three button, I will click. Then I will say, I will click my new column. Now, let's say, let's put it bonus on profit equals to if I you see what I thought you this is error. If is asking us logical test, can you see that your knowledge? 
of Microsoft Excel is not a waste. You can see it in Power BI. That's why you should understand Excel very well. If profit, I will type my profits. If profits, if financial profits is greater than or equals to, still writing my logical test, 2000 comma results true you know in microsoft is it i think that one is value if true value if false yeah result if true result if false so result if true is going to be profit multiplied by two profit financial profits multiply by two comma result in force right result in force is going to be financial profits type it again profits trying to call it out financial profits multiply by one point five then i'll close my brackets let's see again if financial profit is greater than or equals to two thousand financial profit should be multiplied by two hence value in force or results results for the power bi term finally then value let me use the exact term value if true financial profit multiply by 1.5 then i will hit my enter so i already have my column here if i want to check i can quickly come down here and check my data view now if you see if you look at my data view i have it already bonus on profit bonus on profit bonus on profit so if you look at it very well you will see that it is correct if you check the profit and then the bonus on profit it is correct this one is up to 2000 so that means multiplication 1.5 this one is also up to 2000 so Look at this one. This one is up to 2000 multiplied by two. So that's that. So let me come back to my data view, report view. Sorry. Now, we've done three things now. Now, the fourth thing we want to do on this data is a total sale of the whole data. Now, if you look at this particular column, we have country. We also have segments, they are column, right? And you will see that this is just total summary, the total value of all the old sales on the data. Now, let's say I want to know the transaction in a particular country, maybe in Germany, That is the total sales in Canada, the total sales in Germany. You know, that means that we need to do another thing this time now. Now we already got the whole sale, the whole total. Now, if we want to filter now, that is for a particular country, for a particular country, for a particular country, for a particular country, how can we go about that? Very simple. Now, since we know that this is the total sale, the first thing we are going to do is to come to this sales price and then you click. You come to your, don't forget, not new color. Into your data, your table. 
That's the, the meaning of Nicolau. And Nicolau who initiated was logical statement. Let's say I want to initiate revenue. I already have a gross sales on this data. So I don't need a revenue. But just to let you to see how it works, I will I will just leave this for now. I'll come back to it in in two minutes. Let's how we can use a new column to create a new formula. I will come down here, click, and then new column. Now, the column name, I will delete, I will put revenue. Don't forget, the gross sales inside this data, that is the result I'm going to get here. But I just want to show you how we can use new column when you are writing two expression. We want to bring out a, um, that will be sales price multiplied by unit sold. So it's equal to sales price, financial sales price, multiplied by unit sold, financial, Unit suit. Let's make okay. I'm closing up brackets. Just hit my enter. So I have my revenue already. This is my revenue here. So that's how to make use of Nicola when you want to write to expression. You just come down here. Just as you are typing it, since it's inside the table, it will pop out. And then you, you can then continue. You know, if you want to check, I say you come to your data view and you check. This is my revenue column. And if you look at my gross sales and my revenue, they are the same. Don't forget, I said um, I didn't have, I didn't say I want to build revenue. I want to initiate a new column revenue. Just want to teach you how to do that since we only did it in Power Query, but the one on Power BI, I've done that now. So I will come back to my data view, and then since I don't need it, I will delete. How do I go about deleting? Just come down here, just delete from model. Yes, delete. Are you sure you want to delete revenue? Yes. So let's come back to our work. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is that just be looking at this, be looking at my sum of sales price. I'm, I want to do something. Now, I'll come to my sales price. I will click. Wait. So I will come to my sales price and then I will click my new measure. And then I will write my title. This is going to go for total sales equals to sum. You remember some in Microsoft Excel, some is also in Power BI. The column name, what is that column name? The column name is sales price. I will click and then I will close my brackets. Then I will hit my enter. So what am I expecting? I'm expecting to see this exact figure. Now I'm done. Now I will click it to see total sale. Good. Now let me use my white my card here. Click this card. Can you see? I have the same results. Now I'm not true, and I'm not done. If you look at the both of them, they are the same, just that I used total sales, sales price, total sales. They are the same. 
but we are here to get what we want we are here to we are here to get what we want to see not until i apply another formula now i've already gotten this step one is correct because at times if you don't do it well by the time you initiate by the time you check in you will just see blank this place will just be blank you'll be wondering that what's going on now you do it again you see blank you go on it is it is it blank it might be maybe you maybe there is a bracket you're supposed to close that you not close so anything can just happen now i'm going to delete the both of them i don't need them for now so i'm going to remove now the next thing i'm going to do is that i'm going to continue my calculation don't forget we want to know the total sale in a particular country so i will click and i will come to my new measure again new measure i'm waiting now what i'm going to do now is that i'm going to write total Total sales in, in, in Germany. I think yes. I think we have Germany on this data. Germany, yes, we have Germany equals to this. The this one will be the I two. Then I will write another expression or our language that we normally use in Microsoft Excel, call out. So, calculate, uh -huh. calculate, now my expression, total sale, total, total sale. Okay, then I'm going to put my comma here. Filter one. Remember, I'm dealing with a country called Germany. So it's going to be financial, is it, country. What is the next thing I'm going to do? I'm going to put my equal sign and then write. I'm going to put my equal sign, then write my Germany. Quotation. Quotation. That's my bracket. So, total sales in Germany is equal to calculate the total sale. My table, a, a, a column called country, is equal to Germany. That is Germany. You know, we hit my enter. Notes. If I try to bring it out and I'm not seeing anything on the dashboard, it means I have made a mistake. If by virtual you don't see anything, if you are doing it that way and you don't see anything on the card, it means there is a mistake somewhere. So let me try to, this total sales in Germany, I'm expecting to see a value here. Value, the total sales in that region, that country, Germany. So I will click now. Now, this is my Germany here. Don't forget, I said, if you don't see anything, if you see blank here, it means that maybe when you are typing the formula, the expression, you've already made a mistake. You would, it will just be blank. It will just be blank. So now, let me put my, my card here. 
and C. So it means the total sale in Germany is 2,058, 16,058K or was 16,058 a US dollar. So, oh, time. So it means that I can also go for Canada. I can also go for United States of America. Then I, I can also go for the, the, I think Germany, Canada, USA, it still remain one country. So, Let's leave that one. So if you want to know the total sale of a particular country, that's how to go about it. Now, let's say you want to also go for units sold. That is the same thing you have. Because of time, I won't do it. You can, when you are practicing the data, you can just do it, just as it to practice. So if you want to go for your unit sold, what I'm just going to do is that you are going to first get a new measure for your unit sold give it a name total unit sold then after getting your unit sold to check what you have done use your card and follow the routes follow the way i did it and the second thing after you have done that the second thing is you come back to the total unit so that you have done just like my own like this then you click the three button your new measure again and then there you write the title maybe you want to write unit sold Total units sold in in maybe you want to this time you want to go for segments. Man can say total units sold in governments. You know, government is inside is part of the segment. Or total units sold in Pasio. Total units sold in any of those things. And then you write your expression. Then it will, you will have insights. You know what you are doing that you are forging your analysis. And then you will have insights. You will have insights to you will have insights to the data. What has happened in segment? Instead of seeing total units sold, by doing that, then you can then have insights. Okay, units sold in Pasio, Pasio, Pasio. Total units sold in Pasio. That's how you all you ask. That's how you go about it. So now. We have one more thing to do, and we enter into our visualization. Now, the next thing we are going to do, I'm going to get rid of this, remove. Now, the next thing we are going to do, can you see what I'm doing on this data? I'm just trying to bring out different things using my knowledge in Microsoft Excel, using my knowledge to bring out, to just make the data to, to be lively are you are you there so now i want to do something from this data out of this data i want to do something i want to get date for my data and i want to use dax now if you look at my data it has this right this is the date now, if i click this date let me click See what, see, see this. Now see what it brought out. 2013 quarter, January 1, 2013 quarter 1, even though many of these things, there is no, in fact, on the data, if you begin to filter, you will see that there is no transaction there. There is no transaction. Now, you only really want to, you only want to make your dates, or you only want to let your dates to be like this. At least you want to do it in a professional way. You know, if I bring my filter here and I my slicer, which is for filtering, if I eat my slicer here, it will change the date. But the reality is that I cannot even see the months and the day i can only see 2013 this one correct 2013 2014 there are some information on this data there are some record on this data that showed 2013 but we have bulk of 20 
2014, real book of 2014. So I wouldn't want to go with this particular date because I wouldn't want to go with this particular date. I will go and we do date using data analytic expression tax to bring out a new date. So I don't want this date. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to delete this. I'm going to remove it. And then I'm going to build a new date so that when I click that date, my report will respond to it. Not the one that will show quarter and everything will just look rowdy. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll come to my model and then I will come down here, write a DAX expression to create a new table. Then I will click. And then after clicking, I'm going to do something now. Guess that. I will call out the formula, the function, the expression. Then I'm going to write here till date. That is the title equals to. I will call it out. Calculate <clears throat> so. I'm going to write my calendar, not calculate, calendar. It's my calendar. And then write my date. Good. Now he's asking me the start date. And if you look at the data, you see that we have 2013 and 2014. So he's asking for year, month, and day. Then I will write 20. 13, comma, 01, comma, 01. And then I'll close my bracket. After closing my bracket, I will put my comma, and then I will write another date out. I'll call out another date function. Date, the year, 2014, comma, 12, comma, 31. I'm going to close it. Okay, what's going on? Very good. Then I'm going to close it. Then I will eat my enter now now if you look at my data pane you will see that what i did is already here now if i click the arrow you will see my dates but i still one more thing to do on this thing to make it active then what am I going to do? I'm going to create a relationship between this, my old date and my new date, if I want them to interact, if I want the, if I want the new date to interact with my visual. So I will come to my model. I will come down here, model view. Then I will drag, this is my old date and this is my new date, the one I created, YTD. Remember relationship. This time, I will drag this date to this date. Good. So, I want to establish a relationship. Good. So, this is the relationship. Now, if you look at this, it's saying financial table. The column is date. 
write it the table what i did the column is date in other words we created a relationship with dates and dates yeah open relationship at the top this one is just for you to see more to what you are seeing here so you can just ignore it and then come back to come back to if you want to delete this thing you just right click and then you delete but we are not deleted so you come down to your report view again and then my date is now active oh time 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 so now let's begin to i think yeah, I want to dig no i'm done at least to some extent you have an idea of how dax works in power bi so let's begin a data visualization this one takes time so i will rush it but just follow me just follow me now the first thing i'm going to do is that i'm going to do my segment by profit segment by profit so i will come down to my segment 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 where are you come back to my segments and then profits i'll come down to my profits good so i will drag uh -huh, like this good and i will give it i think i love this one good now the next thing i want to do is this i will just quickly come with the formatting please i might not talk too much here just be watching oh dear. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, okay, okay. Thank can you. Can I hear you, sir? Okay, thank you. Let's Okay, so I will also go for my products by profit. So to do my product and profit, I will come to my products. By profit. It's the same thing. I'm going to use this. Thank you. 
Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my segment by gross sales. So I'll come back to my segment again by gross sales. This my gross sales, gross sales, my gross sales. Then I'm going to give it this. Good. Oh. <clears throat> It's a general. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my products by gross sales so products by gross sales are we look for this 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 one Okay, I will also go for this. I will come to my Y axis. Board. I will close it. Come to my X axis. Values. Board. I will come to my bar. Give it this now. It's a little bit on. It's a little bit on. Then, consumer generic. So it's a good. Then, need to. Okay. Fine. Let me just try to drag. So drag. So drag and this. Good. Good. So now, the next thing I want to do is this. I want to bring in my I've done products by gross sales. Now I want to do country by gross sales. So country by gross sales. I will click my country. Country, 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 country. I will drag it here. What is this thing showing? You? Sorry. Let 
me so I can bring it in. I don't like the way that map is showing. Then by gross sales, now I'm going to use three map. Good. And then let me do little formatting here. Come down here. Data label on. Then put the data label. Good. In general. Tie to boot and then need to okay. Now, this is the next thing I want to. Now the next thing I want to do is that I want to bring in my product by discount. Product by discount. So I'm going to click in this one here by discounts discount 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 discounts no right, discounts good then i'll use do not good so let me see little formatting i can also do here Good. Good. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now, I have few things again to do. Now, I want to bring in my sum of profits. Sum of products by rebate. That is the bonus we did the bonus table i want to apply it on this on on our products so i will come down to my products products and then rebate bonus on profits click it as well and then I'm going to use line charts for this good oh, space. I'm going to reduce this one a bit because of space. Okay, so let me see a little formatting I can also do here. I will come down here and then my exercise is Yeah, 
Good. Okay. Again, close my wire just now. I'll come to the marker. Good. And the lines. Come to the lines and the color. This and for the value. It's a just some volume. Good. To me, one more thing. General, my title, I'll put it and I will put it in the video. Okay, good. Now, oh, time. What again? What again? Okay, now. We have two things to put here. I'm coming. Let's come up here. Let's do something here. Now, we want to put uh, the. Remember in Microsoft Excel, there is something I taught you the round shape, whereby you're able to put your values inside that shape in Microsoft Excel that we reference that table, that pivot table, and then import the value into that shape. We want to see it in Power BI, even though. I don't like using that shape, but let me just show you how we can go about this. Then the first thing we are going to do is the profit here. We we come down here, we bring in our white our card, in our card, reduce it. And then we put in our profit here. Good. We do little formatting. We call out the value. We we'll give it twenty nine. And then we we'll put it. Good. Now, I prefer it this way, but let me quickly show you that stuff color value effects so under effects you see something like visual border you hone it and then you click the arrow Start clicking the arrow, you will see a rounded corner. If I round it like this, it will give us that stuff in Excel. Can you see? But I don't like it. For the sake of this class, I won't use it. I'm sorry. I don't like it. So I want to remove it. General effects. Just to show you, if you like using it, that's how to go about it. So now, I brought in my sum of profits. Now, I also want to bring in my average profit. The next thing is my average card again. Sorry, my card. I will reduce this card. And then I will bring in my average profit, average profit is average profit here. Yeah. And I will format color value 29. And I will put it. Now, the next one is, I will also bring in a uh, gross sales. Gross sales, gross sales. I will bring in the card again. Bring the card here. Yeah. 
Brazil, 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 Brazil. Okay. Good. And I'll also format it color value to 29. And I'll put. Good. And then I'll also bring in my unit sold unit sold I'll bring it the card again reduce distance unit sold unit sold unit sold unit sold unit sold bring in my unit sold here I'll come back here color value I'll boot so and then I will also bring in my COG. I'll bring the card again. Reduce. Bring in the card again. And then I'll bring in my COG. Good. I will come down here. My color value 29. Good. Then I will boot. Fine. Good. Maybe I can still drag this one here a bit. And also drag a bit. And I can also drag a bit. Maybe I can also drag a bit. I also drag a bit now. Now, the next thing I want to do is this I'm going to write my title at the text box. I'm going to drag it. Drag my text box. Drag. 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 Drag, drag. Okay. Now I'm going to write mm, data, data, okay, let me say financials. <laughs> Financials it's a uh, an uh, C reports financial data analysis reports twenty twenty four slash twenty twenty five and I'll put it in the middle I'll put it good and I'll increase the size 
to me. Now come here. Let's take it with 60. Let's take it with 60. Okay. Financial data analysis report 2024-2025. Good. Now. This one is to this. Okay, good. Now, the last thing, is it last? No. Okay, before I bring in my two stuff here, let me quickly show you how to format this particular white background. As for me, I love to use white background. I don't use to stress myself. I don't use to stress myself. I love to use white background. I love to use my background, but as for those that are good when it comes to graphic designs, if you want to, if you want to format this background, you will just come down here, and then you see canvas background. Then after seeing it, you choose your color. Let's say you want, mm, let's say you want, let me just pick any colors just to show you. Let's say you want this color. You will not see the effect until you do something. What is that thing? You will come to your transparency and then you will drag, you will drag, then you will see the effect. Can you see? So you know, I told you that me, I don't, I when it, I don't, I don't like using color when it comes to my background. I just love, I love white background. But if you want to use a background, that is how to go about it. But it's looking like this background is even beautiful. It's looking beautiful. Maybe I should leave it. Though I don't love, I don't like using background, but I love this background. I think I will leave it. I will leave it. Okay, fine. Lastly, two things now and we end the class. Okay, now I want to bring in my I want to bring in my date, the date I use DAX to build. Now, see what I'm going to do now. I'll bring out, I'll bring out my date and then my filter, the country. So the first thing I will do is to first bring out my country. 
Okay, before that, let me quickly explain this. Look at this stuff, this smart narrative. The work of this smart narrative, if I activate this smart narrative, that is, if I drag it here, do you know what it's going to do? This smart narrative will summarize these reports. Everything here, it will summarize everything. It will summarize everything. Now, if I put a filtering bot here, and I put country, and I filter the country, and I have my smart narrative, immediately I eat my country. The, the country, let's say I want to filter Germany. My smart narrative will look at the dashboard, will look at my canvas, will look at my reports, and to summarize the, the sales activities in Germany. If I filter Canada, my smart, my smart narrative will do the same to Canada. So as, as I'm filtering, it's also changing the reports. So it will summarize my data reports. So it means that if I don't want to do manual reports, maybe I want to allow my smart narrative to do the report for me, then I can use smart narrative. But I think it is good. Smart narrative will just summarize it. But if you do the manual reports that is slicing and then going then one after the other, that is perfect and that is good. But smart narrative, it will give you the idea, it will give you the insight, it will give you the summary of your data. That is the function of you know, smart narrative. I'm not going to use it here, but when you are doing your own practice, you can just use it and see the, fun the, the way it works. So now what I'm, the next thing I want to do is, I want to bring, bring, I want to bring my filter, my slicer here for filtering. Now I will reduce the space. Hey. Sorry, I will reduce the space here. I'll reduce the space here. So I'm trying to adjust my stuff. Okay, let me just leave it this way. Now, let me still reduce this a bit. Good, then I will bring in my country. This is it here, I will bring it here. This for country. And then let me quickly do small formatting here. Slicer settings. I want a a drop down like this, good, and then general a title. Any title. I don't want to put title. Just leave it like that. Have a fit here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I have my slicer here, and then it remain my date. I will bring another slicer here. Hey. Good. And I will bring in another slicer here. This will go for my dates. So I'll come down here to come and pick my dates and I will hit it. Yeah, this is my date. So now
good. Now, this is my financial data analysis report using with the use of Power BI 2. Now, look at this now. I'm already done with my report. I'm done with the visual. The next nice thing is this. I'm already done with my visualization. Now, if you want to begin to carry out your analysis, before we even begin to slice, you already have the idea of the whole data. So if you look at this, in fact, this is this is enough. This is, if you look at this, you can begin to write your report. Like you, you can start writing your report based on this. 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 Just like the way I taught you when we are doing sales data analysis. In Microsoft Excel, the way I was explaining that in, in writing reports, you start from, do I said, based on instruction or what you are told to do. But I said, if you want to use it for a practice, maybe you want to send it to, you want to send what you have done to LinkedIn, you want people to see your skill and expertise, you want people to see your skill ahead, you can start writing the report. This is my financial sales data analysis report. The Hello, sum sir. Of profit. The sum of profits actualized was 16 million, 18 million dollars. The average profit realized was 24,000, 13K, 34,000 dollars. 24 million, 13,000, 127 million, 93K. And then you start analyzing it one after the other. You come to the profit by segment. On the profit by segment, based on the segment, government are the highest profit and they had you look at it 11 you pronounce it the words are you getting good and then you come down here as well set followed by small business followed by channels partner and then followed by this and followed by this you come to this it you come here again when it, in some of profit by product on the product, the profit realized was so, 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 so. Pasio were the highest. Pasio were the highest. highest. They are 4 million, 797,437.95. Then you continue that way. Second was VTT. Amarela was the third. Velo was, it, was the fourth, like that. On the sum of gross sales by segment governments had the highest with this so, so so small business with the second enterprise third on the sum of grace on products also some of gross sales by country the united states of america were the first they came with this followed by this follow that's not a right report though some of discount by products on the sum of discount by products a column was initiated using new column and then a logical statement was was written, and it was so so so. I mean, if 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 product is greater than if profit is greater than two thousand, give this two thousand. You just explain like that, and then and based on this, we notice that the um, partial came first, based on the discount on products, on the logical statement written, based on the discount on products. This so so. Sorry. I was even um, I was explaining this one. Sorry, sorry. I already explaining this one. Um, some of this kind by product. I mean, then you explain some of this kind by product. Then on the logical statement, what I explained the other time, you now use it on the logical statement. New column was created. Writing a logical statement. This was and the logical statement was if product is greater than equals to this, this, this. And when the when when I did the chart, Pasio Pasio came first, followed by VTT based on the the rebate on profit like that that's how you write your report and now this is a, a country look at it here let's i want to know what happened you know i've already explained this report this report now we want to filter now to know how the activities how it went in each each country then this is for canada i will just click and then 
begin my interpretation when it comes to Canada. I will start writing, writing my report. Now you can also come, let me unfilter it and Now, look at my date. This is the date function. Now, if I drag this particular stuff, if I drag, can you see changes? If I drag, okay, there is a reaction here. Let me drag it this way. Now, can you see? So when I drag it the other time, it shows that there wasn't transaction. There wasn't like, because I was just seeing the something rolling. I didn't see any reaction. But immediately I dragged my date. I saw it change there. There was, there was, there was activeness on my reports. Now, on, on the, if you look at 1 1 there is no transaction here. Now, if you look at 18 8 18 2024, this should be August. 18 2014 then when i filter this particular date then i can take my i can filter the country and then know what happened based on the date i'm filtering and then by doing that i can then begin to write my reports and don't forget what i told you i said if there is no transaction you will not see, it's either you see blank or you just see the, the thing we can do, it will just be rolling, you won't see any activeness. But when there is transaction, you will always see activities. You will always see how, how the transaction went that particular day, month, week, and then year. You will always see the transaction so it means that you can use your date filtering and then you select the date the country and then you see the the activeness on your report and then you start writing your reports you start writing your report so if they ask you that which so so, -so month if the month is here you will check it and then select it this we have sunday monday tuesday we have August 2014. You just this is your arrow, up arrow, and down arrow. This is for your date, and then you will just follow the route and you will get your report. But let's say that you can you see this blank blank one 2013 one that means that there is nothing here. Can you see blank? You, you can't power you you can't force power bi to bring what is not to to pop out what is not inside the data it will not work that way so if i move it a bit no activities yet if i move it a bit no you know i told you when i was checking the data i told you that 2013 that we don't really see activities before the visualization now you are seeing the effect now okay activities here 10, 26, 2013. So that means that when they ask you a question that in this date, go and check and write report on it. You just come to your date. So far, there is a record on it, there is data on it. You just check the date, write your report on what you are told to do and show them the reports. Are you getting me now? So I think we'll draw the cutting here. I'm going to end it here for today. What I will just say is this. Whenever you are practicing, whenever you are practicing, and you want to show it on LinkedIn, what I normally do is this. You might not need to begin to filter everything. Are you getting? You might not filter the dates. Just the first thing after after when you are done with your report, excuse me, when you are done with your report, uh -huh, this first page, this first page, you can just write your 
report on it and and send it to LinkedIn or upload it on LinkedIn for people to see, for recruiter to see. You might not need to be doing the filtering. You can just do it this way, just the first page. You screenshot it, write the interpretation under your screenshot, and then send it, send it to LinkedIn. And also, you can also, and if you want people to interact with your data, that means that you will need to create a link, a live link, such that instead of, instead of doing screenshots, you won't need to do screenshots. You will just create a link, even after writing your report, or even you, you can do your screenshots, write your report, and then now create a link. You can just create a link and just put it on that. You can, you can click this link and just play around with the data. Are you getting me now? So you can also do it that way. And you can just do screenshots and write the report. Anyone that is convenient, you can just go for it. So this is my financial data analysis report 2024-2025. So this is how Power BI works. So I think I'm done with the training on Power BI. Just get data from Kagu. Practice and practice and practice and practice. Then you can also upskill. Upskill. Know more about those interfaces. But I think for now, at least understand this for now. So next thing, we are going to start structure query language SQL. So my advice is this ensure that before next week, you already have it on your laptop so that. When I start, we will start together. SQL is, is, is let me say, is all about code. Code, we'll be writing code. The other, I'll be writing it on the screen. You'll also be seeing it and you'll practice it. It's code. So that means that when you, during this class, your mind must be there. In fact, your heart must be there. Because if you miss a step, you will miss everything. I hear him now, so I'm, I'm preparing your mind ahead. SQL is a bit brain tasking. It's a bit brain tasking. So please ensure that you are in the you, you attend the class. Don't allow anything to distract you. Open your mind and let us let SQL together. I think that should be two weeks class. So thank you very much. Thank you for the audience. I celebrate everybody. Keep learning. Don't stop learning. Continue to learn, continue to improve yourself, continue to upskill, and I look forward to see you at the top. We are super excited you joined today's class. We hope you've learned so much. So keep practicing, keep practicing, keep learning. See you next week as we start my sequel together.